Hello everyone and welcome to All My Art and Soul and this week's video if you've been watching part one and part two of how to create a series of small paintings uh, the dimensions for these are five by seven and I have about eleven with a couple of practice ones just because uh, that's how I it ended up being taped on because I wanted to leave a nice clean edge. You don't need to, and I won't always do this, but it, it just it has such a lovely finish. And these will, of course, be uh, stamped, signed, and matted uh, with the with the front mat, the back, and in a special you know clear envelope and ready to ready for you um, on my website. Um, takes a little bit, you need to scan them, get them set up, and uh, then they'll be ready to go. And I think my next video will be another series of those. So the colors are Nickel Azo Gold, as I only have this much left before I have to make my own, apparently. So um, I know we've talked about this in the previous video, but this week was about finishing with some glazing if you've seen this in the video, I did darken it and add those dots. I added some subtle marks with my new oil pastels, which I will feature. And um, I don't have any, you know, Amazon links or anything with any products yet, but that's a good, another goal. So um, glazing, and then I deepened, and it just, some areas just needed that. Um, to still be, you know, to, to have more depth. So I hope you watch this video. I've done each one individually, uh, a little one or two or three minute video, and then link them together. Um, so this will be a voiceover, and then I will just let you watch um, as I create and I hope you enjoy this and create along with me or join the Facebook group as there's a lot more coming and um, I will see you at the end of the video please like and subscribe and check it out so let's get started well here is the first one and it is a five inch by five inch, and it is, um, I'm so glad I had a couple of practices, and of course, remember to do those first. Just experimenting with the, the uh, let's see, the opacity or the transparency of the glazing. And of course, do I want white, dark? Um, I chose black, so it's a Mars black. And just to put it in a bit more, now right here, I haven't added it yet. I needed, it just needed something. So I also, for this series of small paintings, um, selected just a limited amount. You can really over-select your collage pieces that I keep on the left, as you can see, part of them there. And it gets a little confusing. And of course, my intention for this series was to have it less complicated, less busy, more quiet spaces, contrasting the marks, the texture, the color, the patterns, and the shapes. So I believe I did a better job with this, along with leaving some really nice clean edges and finishes without making a mess too much. And um, you don't ever want that in your way either. Um, if anything is sort of like that, that to me is like a block. So I don't know if I would have been freer, not worrying. I think logically I would have. So, but since it was near the end of my process, um, I could have changed my mind, you know, and added a dash of something, but I didn't really want to do that. Um, so to me, my process is um, an intention of multiple transparent layers with texture, 
marks and pattern and color and letting the shapes. So in a way, um, the shapes are intuitive as well because they're not pre-planned. Uh, they just sort of happen. And then your collage, my collage pieces, I use as a, they're, they're more of a, my anchor in the piece. Uh, maybe not so much in this piece. I'd have to, you know, reevaluate uh, re my uh, process. So here's the next one. And it was just a strip. So I thought, wow, what an interesting shape uh, of a substrate to work with. So I did sort of a, like a reflection in a way, and just swoosh that. It, it is a transparent white from Liquitex that I use, and all of the materials are in the description below the video. And welcome if you are here first, for your first time. Uh, sorry I didn't include that in the introduction uh, of myself in front of the camera there, which is super. I'm going to get doing that more and more. And um, as well as some live lessons. So this is the first um, thought that I would love to do and need to find out which day of the week um, it would have to be in the evenings is best for you viewers. If we were doing lives, what would you like to see lives compared to what I already do? Um, I, I'm thinking of some little techniques that I discover, jelly plate collage making, who knows? So this piece, as you can see, had the same concept uh, on it as I was thinking in the reflection, you know, above, below, um, reflection, um, opposites, and I loved it. So that's a glaze, nickel azo glaze, uh, not necessarily, and then I dabbed it just, I didn't want it. I'm really liking that white. So I only wanted the, the value to be subtle. And that's what I think I'm doing towards the end. I'm getting more subtle. And until the art piece has nothing more to say. Um, I think uh, I that isn't mine. I got that from another artist, of course. But we're borrowing here, you know, making it our own. And I think think that was well said. So here we are with the first of the, I think, 11 five by sevens. Um, as you can see, the rhombuses, I did have a bleed through there and I, I didn't care. I didn't worry about it. It's sort of interesting. It's larger. Um, and as I am adding a very transparent piece of collage, which tears, so then I just grab another similar piece nearby and just put it over. So in this stage, um, I'm not only glazing, I'm finishing up with one or two pieces of very transparent collage and some text. So I will put that in the video description. Uh, it's not only glazing, this is sort of uh, finishing these pieces. So loving this. And it's very hard. It's a cardstock, this piece of orange or pumpkin kind of color. And um, I'm loving it because it's close to the nickel azo. Using a makeup sponge here through my favorite stencil girl stencil. And very dry. Of course, it goes on the edge. And to prevent, oh yeah, and it gets all messy. But the good thing is, I put enough glaze on previously to make it very wipeable. Now, of course, the, the little white edge, if in the future I was working with the stencil there, that's exactly what I put, a little piece of tape to prevent any mishaps like the one you're seeing now. So I try again using, I do believe it's still the... Um, fluid, but Liquitex, but this is an extremely, I did not even dip this brush. Uh, and if I did, I really made sure it was very dry. And then you get a nice clean stencil. So just looking that it really could use one more column over. Yes. 
So overlapping is so cool when you can discover. And then it just needed a few more lines. It was too much white up there in the upper left. And I'm liking how that is going. Um, of course, interesting text and font from magazines. I, as I've said before, I love science magazines, you know, depending on the topic and any other, any kind of magazine, if you can get some really nice, large, strong black font is really awesome. Okay, a little drawing going on, but not very much at this stage. Loving my new gold gel, um, I forget what they're called. I know I put them in, uh, in the previous video. I will put the make of these um, markers in. Actually, no, pens. Okay, beautiful. Just that little bit of gold goes so well with the Nicolazzo. And there's just enough. Okay, here we are on the next one. So as I've said, and as I've practiced, look at the nice sharp line you can have or not have, depending on the angle that you hold your color shaper and the consistency of and the transparency. Now, this I love. It's like a tooth comb made out of uh, the bamboo sticks, cardboard stuck together. But those bamboo sticks with this particular paint, I would probably have to dip them in a cup, you know, uh, with a lot of depth. They're very absorbent. So it just sucked in the paint and didn't have much left for me to put on the surface. So, you know, you live and learn. Really liking that. So I spritz it with a little water and then you can lift a lot more and then, okay, sop up anything that you need. And really liking the surprise. Drying that up so it doesn't smudge or anything. And so I love that I'm not using it, I'm using it differently on each one, but I wanted that commonality, that uniformity, sorry, to use the proper terminology here, throughout the pieces. But notice I didn't use the diamonds on all of them, so I changed it up that way. But I just love these organic dots and how, depending on how you stencil them, they can turn out very delicately. Could have, should have, would have used orange or white as another difference, um, that would have made it, but I'm liking the black. They just needed to be black, and of course my little spritz at the end um, just adds that texture and that just that finish. Okay, so here is the next one. All right. So the word hidden, of course, is hidden, which I love. And I just, I kept going across until I got the perfect, the, the perfect surface over those, over that word. Now, the piece that I just showed you was um, a monoprint that I made with the palette paper, which I am really loving as a piece of collage because it's like totally transparent. The edges melt away. You don't even see them. They just leave this real waxy kind of veil over the, over the previous surface, and I'm really liking that. That one didn't need much, and I'm starting to really recognize, and of course, go with my intuition that, nope, that's done, moving on. So I'm trying to not think at all, just react, and here's the next one. So I'm just studying this one. This one has a lot of action. So I do find a word. Oh yeah, I know. Now I know which word that I choose. And see if you agree with me. And I love when you viewers comment below and go, oh, I loved it, you did this. And oh, I wish you didn't cover it, but 
wow, it turned out really cool anyway. <laughs> Learning to let go is a big part of art and man, doesn't it mirror, mirror those, the same thing in our lives. That's why I love art making as a mirror of the soul or art as a journey of the heart to the soul. And that's, that's what, that's me. That's where I get all this stuff. A lot of you might call it woo woo, but you know what? It isn't. It's just how it is. And, um, I'm finding it more and more, uh, serendipity and oh, all of that cool stuff. The more I do. Yes. Restless. This one did feel very restless and trying to find the right spot. So where do I actually leave it? So it was a whole bunch of words together. As you can see, the text is similar and I cut them up and they do go together. That would have looked cool up there too. I just, I, I forget. I don't have them in front of me. I should, as I'm talking about them. And, um, Right below, isn't that an interesting spot? Yes, it does carry the eye and I don't go over where all the lines have all that energy, except for this one. I think of it and go, nope, nope, it just doesn't need it. And that, no, nope, it covers it up. I don't want that covered, but this piece is interesting. Now I do end up covering those lines, which I don't know it's sort of cool. It didn't really make a difference, so it didn't really add much. So in the future, I don't know if that was even necessary, that little piece of collage. But, you know, only by trying do we find out these things. And later on, so the fine lines on the palette paper and just your standard palette paper that you peel away, and which is great, uh, which is a nice change from using glass because you get to have this interesting collage paper at the end. Okay. Love this. And as you can see, it's somewhat transparent. And it's off-white. It's warm. And I am going to put a little bit of these lines. And I'm going to overlap. So I wanted to make sure that was the right spot. A couple of those spots would have worked, but I think I like it up at the top since it's very, yeah, it's very quiet. The eye was sort of going off the page up there, so this helps carry it across from left to right. And moving on down where the squares are to the word restless. Oh yeah, that's so cool. And if you see these up close, there's so much subtle layers and things going on. And if you do notice, remember the pencil marks uh, in part one. So go back if you're new to the channel or if this is the first time watching this video. And here is the next one. This is where I discovered that it really needed some more contrast at the top right hand. And you can see that there is some more of that palette paper with some lines, which I got double use out of them because I first used them as a monoprint. I cut them out in just, you know, rectangles, whatever size I wanted my monoprint to be, and then got to use them again. It was so cool. Um, yeah. So this is really, really interesting. Ah. love how the lines overlap the, he the much heavier line at the top, the half circle. And you can probably hear me, I'm going through my little stack here trying to find that one particular one. There it is, the bottom one of course. Because uh, I like to look at it while I'm discussing it in our video. So, and the black square beside the group of nine um, sort of organic squares is a black and white photograph from a magazine. Any kind of black and white photograph I love using. 
So, on to stirrings. And I was thinking, too, what do I title 11 pieces? And that's why I also like to use text. Because, and not on every piece. Because you can title them like a stirrings, hidden, wind, water, and then you can, what I usually do for titling is I'll go and look, I'll pick a phrase or a title, and then I'll go look for poetry or quotes or mo more poetry. And then from, if I do find a poem or anything that I go and research, I'll read it. And if there's a phrase that resonates with me, then it leads me to um, maybe another word or a synonym or anything that then I use the dictionary app and go deep and, and I want the titles for me relating to like, cause what stirrings, like what are we talking about here? And you know, my, my philosophy and my topics that I love, <laughs> you know where I'm going with that. So it's so much fun. Um, it, it can be frustrating, but I love it because then you find, then you discover all these new uh, poems and subjects and things you would never have gone looking for before. Uh, only to find a title and it, it resonates to what's going on in the world today uh, metaphysically um, spiritually all of these kinds of things um, so and of course love finishing my piece with a splash and I do uh, and then scrubbing off that edge which is awesome so it didn't get all messed up so I'm very pleased with that and here's the next one. Oh yeah. So this one I love because, here it is. I'm using, oh, it isn't that one. Ooh, I've got a couple of pieces that are similar. Um, with similar music and old, old music that I found in, uh, there it is. And I still, yeah. So the four circles are on the top. And because the dark, the weighted area of the painting is needs to be at the bottom. And as you can see, I added a little more of a veil on top of the squares on the left. And just, I wanted, they needed to be pushed back further. I wanted them to be lighter than the heaviness in the lower right just so we could get that movement up. Um, so you could call it in a way, it is gradation because you're changing the values, even though it may not be sequentially, you know, from light to dark or directly, if that's the right term. So, yeah. And then loving how my little organic dots just sort of fit in there. Some are showing, some aren't, they're partially there. And then that splash keeps it simple. And I do like that line, but I do go over it. Just push it back a little. It might, it might be popping out too much. See how the eye gets sort of stuck there? And that's what I noticed. So I just took it out a bit. And then I used some pencil. And then later on at the end, some, some of my new pastels that I talked about at the beginning of this video. And with the pastel, I only did broken line and maybe a couple of curved lines in certain areas. And the values are so subtle, but it just made that color pop more. And here's the next one. So, yes, remembering that I started the second batch um, I changed the order of the gesso and the nickel azo. And uh, that really made a, d a difference in the effect. Um, so i got to keep a little note about that. And I'm looking for it now. As I'm looking at these, 
Wow, there's so much subtleness going on in the layering. All right, so that has a piece of sort of like um, heavy cardstock. It's very neutral. Here it is. This one's called, or it's going to be called Wind. And I love that. So it needed a few more elements for the energy that I was feeling. So, and this is a longer one, so bear with us, bear with me here. Um, oh, love that. Now that isn't palette paper. I don't think it's palette paper. Yeah, so I couldn't decide where I wanted it to go, so I put it to the side. And now I'm on another thing here. Yes, it did need it, or could have used a different pattern. Now, you know, I put it on the opposite. But I alleviate and balance it out. Oh, I know why I didn't want the dots there. But I ended up putting it... Yeah, I didn't want to break it in half. Because that's what I usually do. So I go back to the dots. And I do add them onto the right. So you have this big column of things going on. And I do use... Let's see. I'm really loving these colors. Now I think the next one, the next set that I make, I want to add more pink. Just a subtle pink. Well, we'll see. It might be even strong pink. And gray. I think that'll be really cool. So as you can see, this is the advantage is, oh, look at that. See how that just, right there. Like, no hesitation. It just fit. And what I love is that you have the bold, um, your early marks, if you want to try this, you know, try this process. I'm learning, and this is only lately, that a combination of light pencil lines and bold, uh, different thick thicknesses of lines in the early stages, because then they show through. Uh, that would be at least the fourth or fifth layer. And it's so cool. Yeah, there we go. And definitely wanted to try one of these again. I know we put, oh yeah. I used one of these at the beginning practice one, the five inch by five inch. And it was in my, you know, uh, schema at this point that, oh yeah, if I want something, I didn't want to use black again. And I thought, well, let's, let's pick up that negative space and that orange around that area, which is, wow, there's so many different oranges going on. There's blacks that's way, way back in the background. And then there's bold ones right over top. And then you have the polka dots. And I like these because they're random. They're not in a row. So that could be a difference. And notice this column of circles that I love. Usually I go horizontal. But this time I love going vertical. And then the energy and that, um, just a quick draw here, that I discover or pick up somehow, you know, intuitively it's just, okay, you know, let's do it. And that gesso on the lower left-hand corner, uh, the nickel azo or whatever glaze you use that's transparent, uh, Payne's Gray is another one of my favorites. So that's why I did that. It just had this swooping energy, and I wanted to emphasize that, as well as add a few of my marks to guide that eye down. Yes, and it needed some, whew, just some, some energy, spontaneity. And then I'm picking up, doing a little glazing there. And all of a sudden, that shape, shows up a lot more where you wouldn't have noticed it before, but only partially. So I do a little bit of lifting there. And I do correct that with some white marker. You know, there's always little ways to get around here. Could have used a, a finer uh, paint pen to do that. But that one was right there. And I don't, oh yes, I had one of my other gel ones. 
the gold, silver, and white set that I purchased that I use the gold all the time. Yes. Okay. So then I'm thinking more, more, more. No, it doesn't need any more. It needs some text. And what's the energy? Yeah. So I just cut off that. So that I think it was, it was an interesting kind of article or whatever, and I love this kind of text. Square, and I don't know what the name of it is, the font, but it's so interesting. And of course, I love finishing it with a sprinkle, sometimes black, sometimes white, sometimes another color, but in this case, definitely the black. So on to another one. So these are, there's a couple with music that I really, really love. And I think, I believe I, I purchased some music sheets. Um, sometimes I look at the words, sometimes I, that's just how I, that's just how my art process is. You don't, a lot of people don't necessarily uh, worry about the words themselves, but I believe that words carry a lot of meaning, a lot of energy, and a lot of hidden meaning and hidden energy that people don't really know about. And I'm doing some more research on that, and it's, wow, it is amazing. So I'm just looking for that piece in my little pile now so I can look at it closely and talk about it. And again, I had some neutral, some lovely neutral magazine cutouts, just little pieces from some uh, history or um, National Geographic magazines, old ones. Um, geez, there's so, so many resources for, for, for things. And oh, there it is. And this is a piece where I did some stenciling on white and on tracing paper. It's not deli paper because I just got my deli paper and I can't wait to use it because it's just as transparent, I think, or pretty close to the tracing paper, but it's going to be way tougher and uh, can handle, um, you know, being uh, used, used on the jelly plate, you're peeling away, all of those things. And the, the half circle that I just use is your crafted rice paper, they call it with little speckles of organic material inside. And oh, it's amazing. And it also brought up or brought out the early pencil lines that I put in and you can see them just subtly. So I thought, okay, I love that piece. I've been dying to use that somewhere and I knew it needed a place where it was, you know, very, very similar in value, which is either white or off white or a light gray. So I thought, okay, let's use my little circle maker here. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Some kind of lid, something. And I love it because the lines are so thin and they're a good size for journals or small works anyway. And thinking of some more line. So I'm thinking orange. I don't want any more white because there's enough white up top. I wanted to punch some color into it. And, oh, I grabbed the gold and made circles within circles. And I love that. Um, I have it right here. I might emphasize a couple more of the lines that dulled when I used my Stencil Girls organic dots again, but in a whole different way. I use them um, horizontally. And I do believe, I do push, that's why, it watered it down. I add a veil of that uh, titanium white because it, I wanted to add another layer. Uh, so, and it couldn't, it can't be the same black, of course. I want to push it back more. So then I use some lifting, a little spritz, so as you can see, look how it just lifts like that. And then soak up that little pool and making sure it's even and just lifting up more in some areas. And here comes the dot. So now I'm gonna make sure my brush is dry 
and I'm going across. And so you just pick up um, anywhere, I'm trying not to get those edges all messed up, and I and I do a good job of that. And just having that stronger black on top of, so that's like one, two, three, four, at least seven layers in that one area. So I'm thinking, oh, no, no, see how it just, it just didn't even need it, right? It needed some line. So I'm looking for, okay, so that just cuts all that beautiful stuff off. That breaks it off and see how the eye doesn't flow up. It's like a block and you, and it misses, it covers all those beautiful patterns that you can flow through because of the faded background. So I'm thinking, okay, so what does it need? I know it needs something and it doesn't need a lot. Okay, no, too much contrast. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sort of explaining you my explain to you my decision making, uh, which is very reactive. Um, oh yeah. So I think okay, let's punch some color, and you know if you've seen if you're here, or have been following me a long time, this is one of my early. I just love cutting up squares or rectangles and I do have my it's called the floating squares and my next work that's coming the bigger stuff um, I have a painting right here that I look at right I'm looking at it right now while I'm talking to you and the upper portion of the painting is where I want to go and the lower part is so complex it's crazy see I just bah! so I had, I had to do the voiceover because I said I, just, I hate these this isn't working and of course, because I had a nice layer of gel on there, the medium, uh, it scraped off very easily. So I'm thinking, okay, yes. And then sometimes it's really cool because you just get fed up. You know, you just go, uh, what am I doing? So just stop the overthinking. Okay, on to, now I don't know if this is the last one or the second last one. I think it's the second last one. Yeah, second last one. All right. So you see how it had that arch of orange and it was such a wonderful diagonal dynamic coming from the upper right to the lower left. I didn't know what to do. So my instinct said, okay, put in some texture there and then later on you can come in with a really, really light layer of that nickel azo, and I'm so glad that I did. <laughs> you can hear him there, it's on the top of the pile. With more pencil and those really thin, that palette paper with the lines, with my mono prints, is what a great double use. And I have some other colors on there, so just hang in there. So I hope you have been enjoying this series of small, how to create um, a series of small abstracts, five by seven. And it's pretty amazing. So now I've got 11, they're ready to go. My Amazon order of the mats arrived yesterday, Friday. And um, I just gotta get going and scan them and upload them and off we go. Um, price points and all that, that, that'll be coming. So don't forget to check out my website. I know we're not going to be there this Sunday when this video comes out, but this week. So love that. Off-white. That was the other half of the half circle that I used in the previous one. And it's great because it gets covered, but it's there. And I love the fact that, and I'm going to intentionally do that at the beginning, but you have thicker pieces of collage that you know you're going to cover up. But the shape of them, if they're covered up with opaque paint, like totally veiled, and then something else happens, you build up this history of hidden whatever it is on your work. It's uh, so cool. So why I thought water, see that, that wave thing? And I thought, okay, it's very, it's very literal. 
because of the shape, but the piece had the energy. So wait and see what I do. And that was crazy. So it needed to be cropped, <laughs> that piece. The scale was too large and it still needs some cropping as you can see. So I just slice down, save those pieces for other work and there you go. Isn't that funny? I always think I have to try it there first before I know it goes on the top because I, I know it goes on the top or I want it on the top. I know I don't want all my work like that, but for these, and so it needed another one of those, which I hated. But now that it's covered, you know it's back there. And so if you don't like something, you just cover it up. Now, you can cover it up in many ways. Translucently, op opaquely, you know, it depends. Maybe just with a bunch of lines. So that looks really cool. Like, whoa, what is that thing? Huh. And so I wanted it near some black and white. I could have put it down below, but I, I could have. That lower left-hand corner would have been cool, too. Yeah, so there's, there's many options. And then after I had the one word, it didn't need anything else. Except coming up. Wait for it. No, no, no. It just ruins it. There's enough on there. So I need something on the left. I know it. So I start with some line. Do some more scribble. Overlap that corner because it's sharp and I didn't like it. Then I realize, yes! What? More dots? <laughs> yes. And just a little bit of one, two, three, four, five, six columns. Oh, seven. Short one. And seven's good. Odd numbers. And then I just needed that one to overlap because there wasn't over any overlapping. And ah, beautiful. So now you see how the eye climbs up, goes around, comes down. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I wanted just to go over that water a bit. Not too much. That's tricky. Getting the, just the right amount. And then, of course, just a little splash. Okay, on to the final one. All right. Really? I did do that? Cool. Okay, now i got to find it in my pile here. I had them all mixed up. Okay. Oh, this one I love. Uh, the piece of black and white collage because it's from it's a torn piece of a very large piece of collage that has very open lines and as you can see I ended up matching it with the other line going from the right to the left here it is and just putting more, just using the line pattern in here and sort of in the background. And I love how that uh, off-white partial circle looks so cool and you can see through it. So neat. And then, of course, a different shape. And I love these dots because you can do circles. You can do any shape with the dot along with... And I've not done diagonal with them yet. Coming up. And that piece of red is the, um, not palette paper, but it's the tracing paper. A very stiff tracing paper. Or it's the baking sheet paper, if you know what I mean. And I, I always forget that name. And coming in with the gel pen and making those beautiful vertical lines of energy going down or coming up. It depends. And I love up at the top too, those black lines that are pushed way back. And then you have real close ones. So there's all this different depths going on, a variety of depth and a little splash. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed. 
this video, this series. I hope this has helped you see how much easier it is to create in a series and have more consistency in your work and uniformity and be more productive. So I will see you in the next video.